Hey guys, Chad here with Excess Trail Cameras. Today we want to talk a little bit about how to troubleshoot a PIR sensor. So most people think this little black plastic thing is actually a PIR sensor. And when, when you're talking to someone, when you ask them, you know, what is a PIR, what is a PIR, that's typically what they point to. And they're not totally wrong, but the actual black plastic um, concave piece is actually a Fresnel lens, which if you were to take that apart, um, is made up of a couple different levels and a bunch of concentric cones or rings on the back side of that. Behind this black plastic is actually the PIR sensor. And again, you know, these things have been out for 20 plus years. Most people think that they're triggered from motion. It's a motion sensor or motion uh, and heat sensor. And again, that's not entirely wrong, but it's not accurate either. A PIR sensor is a passive infrared sensor that detects change in the infrared radiation of an environment. So behind this Fresnel lens is a sensor that basically has a little window on it. And behind that window, there's two elements. Those elements look out that window and they're diffused through the Fresnel lens into a bunch of intricate zones, which we consider the actual detection area or detection zone of a trail camera. When one element has a different reading than the other, that's when the camera knows, hey, there's a change. I'm going to go ahead and snap a uh, snap a photo or take a video. So it's actually the change of infrared radiation in the environment from one element in the from one element to the next inside that PIR sensor. Almost all cameras, trail cameras, use a dual element sensor. So there's two elements inside that sensor. If you see, uh, you know, one of these random Chinese companies that have, you know, three PIR sensors, they're using three sensors, which is a whole other different topic of why that's not a good idea. Um, but most standard Major players in today's industry are using a dual element sensor, um, much like this here. But uh, as trail camera users, I think we've all been in, in a scenario where we go check our cameras or if they're a cellular device, we're getting pictures sent to us and it seems like the camera is taking nonstop photos, just one photo right after another. Um, sometimes we you know, kick ourselves in the butt and say, oh, we should have trimmed this branch or should have cut these weeds. You can see the weeds blowing around causing those false triggers to happen. But then there's an occasion where you're reviewing those photos and it looks like nothing is actually moving. Like the camera is just malfunctioning, taking nonstop trigger events, um, burning up your batteries, eating, uh, eating your storage on your SD card and causing you a lot of wasted time and actually going, reviewing um, those photos. So that's, that can be pretty frustrating. But today we're gonna talk about the easiest way to troubleshoot that and I guess verify what is actually is going on with that camera, what is causing those false triggers. So the very first thing, and this is gonna sound real obvious, but we are a trail camera company. We deal with uh, all types of trail camera users from beginners to experts. And um, unfortunately, this, this it, it happens. We talk, we talk to people who think that their uh, camera's taking pictures every 20 seconds, it shouldn't be. And then after we talk to them, they actually have their, their camera programmed in time-lapse. So it's actually programmed to take pictures every 20 seconds and the camera's actually operating the way it should. So that's the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is make sure you have the mode, um, your desired mode set right inside the user menu of your camera, regardless of what camera it is. Make sure it's not in time-lapse um, set to take pictures at uh, you know a set time interval. So that's the very first thing you're gonna to wanna to do. The next thing, um, if you've gotten to that, you know your camera's in photo mode or video mode, um, what you're going to want to do is place good batteries, new batteries, inside your, uh, inside your camera. And then you're going to want to access that user menu. You know, and on Lift 2, you would just hit the menu button. But you're going, to, you're going to want to go in, set the camera up in photo mode. Then go down to um, your trigger delay and set that to the lowest possible setting that the camera will allow you to set. So 5 seconds, 10 seconds, 15 seconds, 1 second, it doesn't really matter. Just set it to a low setting where if the camera does have a faulty uh, PIR element, that it's going to take um, uh, random photos very, very quickly. Um, so set your trigger delay to a low setting, and then you want to, want to make sure that your burst count is set to 1, and also make sure that your camera is set to operate 24 hours. So if your camera has the ability to adjust the operating hours to run during a specific time of the day, you're going to want to turn that off, make sure it's set up to run 24-7. So to overview, this camera is in photo mode. Burst count is 1. 
trigger delay set to five seconds uh, and set it to run 24 hours out of the day. Now, if this camera has a bad PIR, it's going to take pictures every five, uh, every five seconds. So to verify whether it's the camera that is faulty or if it's just uh, doing its job and taking a picture of branches or grass or leaves or whatever blowing around, the easiest thing to do is to take this camera and isolate it in a dead environment. And all that means is you're going to place this face down on a table. You can place it in a cabinet, in your refrigerator. Uh, you can set it up against the wall. You just want to place this camera up against something where it's physically impossible for it to, to, for it to detect any infrared radiation change in the environment that that PR, PIR sensor is actually watching. So what we tell people is just put it against the inanimate object, facing the object, and let it run for 15 or 20 minutes. Go back, grab that camera, shut it off, pull the SD card out. You should only have a couple photos on that SD card. You should have a photo when maybe you turned it on and you set it down, and then when you picked it up and turned it off. If you have more than just a couple uh, a couple photos that when you first set it down and when you pick it up, there's potentially something wrong with that camera. If you have not random nonstop pictures for the entire five or 10 minutes, um, you do in fact have a bad PIR sensor. There's an element that is burned out and that camera probably needs to go back to its manufacturer for a warranty repair or a replacement. Or if it's out of warranty, I guess, um, I guess you'd be out of luck. But if you're dealing with us, Make sure you send us an email. If you're having some type of PIR trouble or you think that camera's taking false triggers, um, again, make sure it's programmed right and then uh, get it set up, place it in a dead environment and figure it out. So we hope this video makes sense. We hope, uh, hope you learned something. And if you like it, be sure to hit that subscribe button, uh, hit the bell notification, give us a thumbs up. And if you have any feedback on any other trail camera tips, techniques, tutorials, anything you guys want to see from us, just leave it in the comments below.